All right, we will uh, begin the meeting. Thank you all for showing up tonight. Uh, if we could all please stand and remove your hats if you're wearing one, and our Vice President will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Greg. Thank you all. <clears throat> all right, everyone's here where we are in full holiday swing. We have the Grinch sitting in the front uh, front row. So we'll not let her rob us of any holiday cheer today. Uh, let's begin with a verification of quorum. Good evening, okay, Director Bill. Here. Director Commission? Here. Director Cook? Here. Director Doherty? Here. President Van Vliet? Here. Five present quorum men. Perfect. Thank you, Lynn. Do we have any public officials that would like to speak this evening? I know I got a message from Darcy Burke saying she's she is uh, in Temecula, so she she regrets she's not able to be with us today to give us an update from the Water District, uh, but wanted to wish everyone a, a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Yes. So let's see, we have minutes from the last meeting, November 7th. Would anyone like to make a motion to approve? Motion. Second. Second. Sorry. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. All right, we have a couple of uh, presentations this month, beginning with community patrol. Zach, would you like to come on up and take the floor, please? Good evening. My name is Zachary Wells. I'm the Community Patrol Captain for Canyon Lake. For the month of October, we issued we had nine calls for speeding throughout the community. However, we were unable to catch them up with a uh, vehicle. We had 45 parking calls, 282 citations were issued. 47 calls for unauthorized entry, where 13 of them led to a citation. Seven calls for golf carts, which four led to, uh, to citations. 29 for e-bikes, where you're unable to stop. Uh, three uh, calls for vandalism. We had 37 calls on property damage, which we were able to uh, find and bill. Uh, we had 36 noise complaints. 15 of those led to a citation. We con confiscated 96 passes. Uh, last month, we had a total of 207 ca uh, calls for service. 64 of those were unable to locate. 163 citations were issued to guests. Five of the uh, five citations were issued to service providers, 148 issued to members, 259 warning citations issued total. We spent a total of 67 minutes doing two lane protocol to assist traffic entering the community. 57 of those minutes were spent at Main Gate, with 10 of those minutes over at East Gate. We also, I would also like to go ahead and introduce my supervisor team uh, up here on the slide, where I have presented all five of my supervisors and their photos. Uh, on the far left, you have Commander Fosaga, who has been with us since the start of the year. You have Commander uh, Lee, who has started uh, started as a supervisor at the start of the year, but has been with us since June of 2022. Uh, commander uh, Alkamizi, who started of September of 2022 as a commander. Uh, commander Quintanilla, who started at the start of this year. And then you have Commander Davis, who uh, became a supervisor of October of 2021, but he started in May of 2020. I have brought two supervisors here today to go ahead and uh, especially appreciate them for their hard work that they have done uh, on November 26th at the tree lighting. At uh, this time, I'd like to ask uh, Commander Quintanilla and Commander Alcamizi to both please come up here. Commander Alcamizi, I want to say a special thank you for you helping out at the tree lighting event. You were able to go ahead and help with all the vendors, making sure everybody was able to enter into this event safely and making sure everybody got home safe that night. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank 
Commander Quintanilla, on the same night, you had a special event or uh, situation happen in that parking lot where you had approximately 15 to almost 30 people ready to go at each other. And right there, you stepped in between everybody, separated them, and kept control of the situation until backup arrived. For that, I want to say thank you. And here is your reward. I'd like to add to Commander Quintanilla. I was there that night when he was surrounded by people. He handled it very well. The people were very angry, upset, yelling at him. He had his back against the, his vehicle. And I walked up to him and said, you can get in your car and leave. You don't need to be dealing with this. You don't need to put yourself in harm's way. And he said, no, I got this. And he took care of it. And I really hope that we can have more people like him here. And I really hope that we appreciate people that do what he does. Yeah, Commander uh, Keatini, I'd like to add my thanks as well. We, uh, you know, you bring a, a calming presence to a to a very volatile situation. Sometimes people are very agitated. They they certainly have their perspective. Uh, and there was there was a threat of, of of physical altercation, and and your calmness and presence and and the way you 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 behaved there uh, was exemplary. And from the from our association, we truly thank you for your service. Thank you. Board, have any questions? Board members, any questions or comments? So one, well, I guess I'd like to ask one question. We we changed our our, our uh, entry procedures, and Halloween was one of the, was the first upper, first major event where we did where where we said no, we're going to change our our uh, gate entry to uh, restrict service providers from entering the gates. And I know we've heard there was a feeling, a certain feedback I got from the community is they felt it was a little calmer on Halloween overall. Maybe not the people who live on, on uh, Canyon Club and Lighthouse, because that's always <laughs> always <laughs> quite busy. Those, those good souls who put out thousands of pieces of candy. But I wanted to ask the question is, <clears throat> at the gates and so forth. Did you see, and did you have any incidents where you actually were turning people away who were trying to get in uh, under guest uh, service provider? Uh, we did have uh, quite a few people that day that were trying to enter in. We were able to explain the policy to them. Uh, they understood and they were able to go ahead and make contact with the people they were trying to see and rearrange other arrangements to be able to complete their services uh, either another day or outside of the community. That helped out with a lot of traffic that we had that day, making sure that the roads are clear and we didn't have as many uh, traffic jams as usual. Great work. Thank you for, for that feedback. Appreciate that. No problem. Any other questions, board members? Great. Thank you very much. We appreciate it, guys. Great. Um, so something we haven't done for a while that we're reinstituting is uh, one of the uh, we have a lot of great people in this community uh, that we're very thankful for. Uh, and, and a lot of them are involved in our clubs. The clubs are, are the backbone of our community that helped form Canyon Lake, made it the vibrant community that it is. And so we want to recognize a couple of individuals for their service within the past year. And the first one is Bonnie Dubs. Um, well, if you, if you let me say a few words about you, Bonnie, then I'll have you come on or come on up and we can, we can honor you presently. So if you don't know Bonnie, she was a flight attendant for 35 years with American Airlines. Uh, so she has a tremendous uh, experience there. She's also been 12 years as the marketing director at uh, World Financial Group, and she is the president of our of our music, uh, the Guild. Uh, 
that does our music uh, things. And, and, the, and the Guild typically has, uh, there were four concerts plus the Harbor Fest, which was immensely successful every year. This year was was uh, fantastic uh, with, with so many people. Uh, again, a free thing they give back to the community by sponsoring this this overall one. And, and I'm certainly a big fan of, of Bonnie and the Guild, or at least I was until last month when they held... <laughs> They held and they bought the Tim McGraw uh, uh, cover band, Vegas McGraw. And for better or worse, my work, my wife <laughs> was up front and center. And and he kept calling out to her song after song after song. <laughs> and she's never been the same since. <laughs> so anyway, Bonnie, I want to thank you for your service. Now I have to wear a cowboy hat when I go home. <laughs> okay, the other thing, again, both of these groups, both, both the Guild, which does so many great things for our, for our community, it makes, it makes Canyon Lake really special, right? How many communities do you have where you can get nine concerts a year in your, in your little community, right, of a few, of a few square miles? Um, and they're great entertainers. Um, and the Guild brings cover bands, but Doug Schultz, uh, is, he leads our concerts at the Lodge. And Doug, uh, <clears throat> before he was here, he was uh, 10 years a uh, uh, independent jam producer as well. He was uh, 15 years as the KSON Country Fest uh, producer. Uh, he was five years with the uh, um, Intercon uh, concert uh, director, and he has for almost seven years been, been leading our concerts at the Lodge. What Doug does using his vast contacts uh, in the industry, in the music industry, he brings these, these, these uh, headliners uh, and brings the original bands to uh, to Canyon Lake. And again, here in this room, we uh, we have a great time. And it, and it appeals to really to all music types, right? He, he, he brings country, he brings rock, he brings alternative. And it's a nice blend of music that I don't think many other communities uh, in the state, in the country, even even have this opportunity. And so, Doug, please come forward. We'd like to present you with a certificate. Congratulations and thank hey, you for thank everything. You. Seriously, appreciate it. I have to say that um, when I got here, I was shocked that the POA was also in the concert business, and and I was like, we do what? And when when Doug stops volunteering, I don't know what we're going to do. So thank you. Thank you both. All right, I don't believe we have any announcements to make, any special announcements. I guess I will make one. You can always count on me for something off 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 the script. <laughs> and that is on Thursday, we will be closing the sale of the fire station uh, with the city. And so officially on December 7th, uh, the uh, we will complete the deal that began uh, in January of this year. So almost a full year, but we were able to complete the effort. Uh, it's a great uh, opportunity for for the uh, community, for this city to have to have local control and to have the building and for the POA. And so it's a it's a total win win. It's a collaborative effort uh, by both entities and organizations, and um, it all comes to fruition on Thursday. Okay, so at this point, we have an agenda that you all have, if you haven't gotten a copy, there are copies available outside. If any members would like to comment on agenda items, 
You can simply wait until that point, raise your hand, and we will call you up. Um, if you would like to comment, comment on something that's not on the agenda, this is your opportunity to, to speak up. If you haven't filled out a form, uh, then, then do so over here. But it looks like we have two. And so um, please. Thank you, Mr. Uh, President. Um, Connie Fowler, vandalism. You wanted to speak about vandalism? Come on up to the table and turn on the mic. Thank you so much. Yeah, come up to the front, press that red button, and I'm going to give you a three-minute timer and feel free to fill the time available. Is that working? Oh, I'm speaking for myself as well as some of my neighbors. Uh, I live on Continental, and between Golden Gate and... Um, I would say Bear River, there's been a lot of vandalism, uh, specifically windows broken with rocks. And we had our home, uh, Sheriff Juarez thought that it was a pellet gun that went through our big round window that was broken out. And my husband and I were covered with glass. It's shattered everywhere because our home is older, so we didn't have the safety glass. But we've had children banging on our windows and we have a glass top in our door for at least a year and we have we put in a, a camera for the doorbell I have a lot of pictures but they always put their hoods on and very hard to identify anybody so I was wondering if it would be possible to just concentrate with our securitists just driving with their lights on for maybe a couple of weeks in that area um, I don't know if that would help or not, but there just is not a lot we can do. I know that I had a report that some kids on e-bikes stopped at the corner of Continental and uh, uh, I think it's White Wake. I don't know if that's right, White Cove. And the man saw them and they were just throwing rocks in his windows. So I think this is horrible in this community. And it's horrible for my husband and I. We're senior citizens. We don't need the stress, and I'm just hoping that maybe there's something that we could step up a little bit just in that area. I don't think it's going on everywhere, but there are a lot of children in that area, and I like kids. I have nothing against them, but the doorbell dish thing has just gotten to be ridiculous, and now it's now it's serious. And one other small comment I want to make is there is a motorcycle in our lake that drives around every single night with about three kids on it. Um, it's a small motorcycle. It's very, very noisy. And I'm appalled that our securities have not heard it or seen it, but it shouldn't be happening. So I'm just hoping maybe the rules can, can be pressed a little bit more. Thank, thank you. And I am sorry that uh, that's certainly happening to you. That's uh, that's most unfortunate. It's, it's a good thing we have our uh, our security here as well, um, so that we can uh, make note of it. And so we will certainly just take that under consideration and do it. But we empathize with you and uh, and appreciate you raising it to our, our awareness. Thank you. Okay, our next member will be Brandon Karpowitz. He'd like to speak about the lodge. Brandon Karpowitz, 3868552. Um, first of all, thank you for the time tonight. I genuinely do appreciate the openness that this board has had with their communications to its members. Um, I'm here tonight mostly with questions about the lodge and to find out where we're at in regards to the timeline for completion of this project. If I recall, the project had to be completed by this fall as permits were to expire in August, September. I ask that in part because according to the financials, it appears that over the four months that have been posted, the lodge had already hit about 60% of its budgeted subsidy. And the banquet side of things is even worse. Now I've heard the last two to three months have been better, thankfully, despite the inconsistent and ridiculously limited hours. Now, I hope I'm wrong, but usually with projects coming in way behind schedule, rarely do they then come in under budget. If the amenity is losing more money than expected and the project is costing more, then that's going to be a double hit for us. As an aside, the subsidy for this amenity wouldn't even bother me if I felt we got good value for the money. 
but considering we pay for it in our dues, it shouldn't be the most expensive place to eat and drink in the community. My other question is in regards to the design and work being done. And this is more a question on the process of the project. I'm curious who actually runs the job site and is making design decisions. Is there someone going to the job site often to determine where changes and adjustments need to be made? Or is the contractor just building off plans? In every project I've ever been a part of or seen of, adjustments are made each step of the way. Sometimes what looks good on paper and in a drawing doesn't translate physically and change orders happen. It's pretty standard in construction. I bring this up because of a bunch of things that I and many others have found to be issues that should have been caught during construction. Here are just two quick examples. First is the hanging liquor racks above the bar. They overwhelm the decor, taking away from the views, and also block the TVs for those sitting at the bar. When highlighting scenery, less is more. As little as possible should be blocking the views. We removed those racks from the country club a couple years ago. Even John Tapper and Bar Rescue removed them from Pepe's, and now we put them back up. They look dated. It's reminiscent of a holiday in lounge from the 70s. We don't need to brag that we have plenty of absolute. That's why there's a bar back working. And quite frankly, it isn't open enough hours to go through that much stock anyways. Secondly would be the, the fire pits outside. They appear to be for appearance only. They're way too wide to generate any heat for anyone unless you're sitting on top of them. Usually in a restaurant setting, the fire feature is made where you can feel the heat while sitting in a chair. You're not getting that the way these are designed. The single burner is nowhere near enough to generate any warmth to anyone not within 14 inches of it. There are a lot of other curious decisions or for that matter, non-decisions, inefficiencies in design, as well as poor craftsmanship and quality of materials that are being used that time limits do not allow me to go into. They all seem like things that should easily have been noticed and modified during construction. And some may think this is just nitpicking or complaining just to complain. But this project is very expensive, was very controversial, and very divisive to the community. I would think that we would demand it to be as close to perfect the first time so we don't have to spend even more money to correct. The project has always been behind schedule the entire time, so why not make sure it's done right if only to prove us naysayers and complainers wrong? Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Brandon. <clears throat> so I appreciate your comments. Uh, I, I, I'll just make a, a couple of comments. Uh, there's a lot of questions you had in there that we're not able to respond to, but I will say <clears throat> we do watch uh, we every month, actually every week, we, we meet uh, to go over uh, the, the budgets, the, I can assure you the uh, project is still coming within budget. I know it's it's a question we've asked so many times. I'm sure our, our general manager is, is sick of that question. But but the good news is it's not only <clears throat> coming within budget and we are within a dangerously close of completing the uh, of completing the, the whole effort. Uh, and it's still under budget. Uh, even as projected to be under budget still. So we're still still tracking well as far as that goes. And as far as uh, management, it is being managed on a daily basis uh, with management uh, going down and doing it. Um, so I know I can test to that. Other than that, uh, appreciate your comments, Brandon. Thanks. But I will add that I'm a licensed general contractor. I've been in commercial construction for 40 years. I probably spend about an hour a day here on the job site every single day this entire year. And um, Steve Schneider, our director of operations, spends about the same amount of time. Um, we tend to not be here at the same time. So there's someone from the POA watching this project, uh, all of our projects, uh, multiple times a day, every single day. And the project is under budget. Thank you. <clears throat> no other members? With that, let's uh, let's get into the agenda. The, there are... Uh, Five items on the consent, or four items on the consent agenda. Uh, any requests to modify the consent agenda from the board? I'll move that we approve the motion to approve the consent agenda. Um, is there a second? Second. All in favor of approving the consent agenda, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. Okay. All right, the uh, resolution uh, on this, I think I, I get the opportunity of reading this resolution for the last time. <laughs> so as background, in January, the city initiated the purchase of the fire station from the Canyon Lake POA for the appraised value of $1.39 million. The station, the parcel, has been owned by the POA since 1970. It has been used by various local agencies through the years to provide fire and emergency medical services. 
uh, to the citizens of Canyon Lake. A full-time timeline and history of the fire station is available on our website for those who are interested. After months of working very closely together, the, uh, the POA and the city of Canyon Lake are were pleased to announce they reached an agreement on the terms of a purchase uh, agreement, a purchase and sale agreement, that is, uh, for the fire department station one on July 31st. And we had a commemorative signing uh, and we had a pass the key event. And many of you have probably seen that. Uh, and due diligence then has continued. Now we're in the final two days of, of escrow, which will close on December 7th. And so for that, in order to close escrow, um, I'm, I'm going to read the following resolution. And I'm going to skip all the whereases and why fours. And if you will, if you'll bear with me not to go through all of the legal things, I'll get to the meat of it, which is <clears throat> now, therefore, be it hereby resolved. The board authorizes CLPOA's President Bill Van Vliet and General Manager Eric Kazakoff to execute any and all necessary documents to effectuate the sale of the fire station from CLPOA to the city, <clears throat> subject to the terms of the purchase service agreement, purchase and sale agreement, which documents <clears throat> include but are not limited to the grant deed, which transfers the fire station from the POA to the city and sever severs the launch ramp from the rest of the subject property. So the launch ramp and the parking lot will remain POA uh, property. We will have a shared use management agreement or a SUMA that provides the city with access to the fire station <laughs> incident to their ownership uh, thereof and contribute funds to the maintenance of, of, of the POA streets, a draft which is included uh, as an exhibit C in the purchase and sale agreement. It will include a, a bring down certificate. The bring down certificate states that all representations and warranties in section 13.1 of the PSA remain as of the date of the closing, true, correct, and complete in all material aspects or respects uh, when it was first made in the, in the PSA. It will include a, an owner's affidavit in a form reasonable and acceptable to the city and its title company, and all other documents reasonably necessary or otherwise required by the escrow holder and or title company for this transaction to consummate the transactions contemplated by the PSA. Is there a motion to approve this? Motion. Second. Any member comments requested or desired at this point? If, you, if you'd like to speak, you can raise your hand. No member comments, any board comments or discussion? All right, let's go right. This is the third time around, so let's uh, let's do it for the for the last time. <clears throat> Mr. President, do you want to do a roll call vote or? Sure. Okay. Sure. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Uh, all right, Director Bill. Aye. Director Commission. Aye. Director Cook. Aye. Director Doherty. Aye. President Van Vliet. Aye. Hearing none. Motion carried. All right, item two is a committee appointment. Steve Schneider, come on down. Well, he's walking. Can we do a uh, housekeeping item? President Van Vliet. Yeah. Where's uh, my mop? <laughs> we, um, in consent agenda item C, uh, the bylaws change. We should have table, uh, pulled and tabled that item. Thank you for uh, for catching that. Absolutely. And so uh, anybody can make a motion to do that now. I'll make the motion. We table that. Is there a second? Item C uh, on the uh, the change of the bylaws. We're going to table that to January. Second. Oh. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate that. Hearing none. Motion carried. All right, Steve. Now you're up. All right. Good evening. Uh, so there's a appointment, or excuse me, there's an opening on the TWG committee. Uh, Lawrence Mintz was selected for the opening, the open position on the TWG committee. The TWG committee uh, voted and accepted this member in their October meeting. It's recommended the board of directors approve the appointment of Lawrence Mintz to serve on the TWG committee, all contingent upon execution of a confidential agreement effective immediately. Is is there a motion? Motion. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Are there any member comments on, uh, on this item, the appointment of uh, TWG committee? 
No one wishes to speak. Any board questions or comments? Uh, yeah, I would. I'd like to comment uh, about Larry Minch. He's a, a great guy. He's been in the community for a long time. Uh, him and his wife decided to go up north to experience life for a while, and they missed Canyon Lake so much they came back. And Larry's jumped into his responsibilities, both on the men's golf club and uh, and the Tuesday work group. So we're glad to have him back. Thank you. Yeah, I'll add, you know, to, to Larry and actually all the TWG, they, they are tireless workers that do a great service for our community. And so I certainly thank all of them for that. All right, let's take a vote. All in favor of uh, appointing uh, Larry Mench to the uh, TWG, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. For the Green Committee, uh, there's three uh, open open spots. The Green Committee charter was changed to no longer have representatives from the different clubs on the committee. Instead, the committee will have seven regular members and one alternative as of January 2024. The committee would like to appoint Marcus Shinanabam. Sorry if I screwed or <laughs> sorry if I uh, if I um, uh, totally just well, anyway. <laughs> and uh, Larry Minch as members and Edward Reyes as an alternative. The Green Committee uh, NAMIS accepted these members in their November meeting. It's recommended the Board of Directors approve the appointment of Marcus Shinanabam and Larry Minch as members uh, and Edward Reyes as an alternative to serve on the Green Committee, all contingent upon a, uh, execution of a confidentiality agreement effective January 1st, 2024. Thank you, Steve. Is there a motion? Motion. Second? Second. Okay. Uh, any members wish to comment on Green Committee appointments? No one? Okay. Board member comments or questions? Any board members have questions or comments? Yeah. Uh, as I said earlier, Larry Mensch has jumped into a service for the community, and we thank him for that, uh, joining the Green Committee. Uh, Marcus Schonebaum, which you did a good job with, uh, has been a member of the community for a long time, has served on the Green Committee before, did a great job, has recently retired and uh, wants to devote more time to the community. And Edward Reyes, who's fairly new, a uh, member of the Family Golf Club, and look forward to having him serve on the committee as well. So I, think, I want to thank all three of them for their service and uh, dedication to the community. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. And that was actually one of the questions I had is when, when we modified this uh, charter last month, last, I think, or a month or two ago, we we did it to try and get more participation from other or potentially even new um, members of different golf clubs. So you said one's a member of the men's club, one's a member of the family golf, any others? Uh, we have representation on all four clubs, so the women's golf club. Um, I'm sorry, we don't have representation on the Niners. Uh, but the uh, family golf and the men's golf club and the Tuesday work group all have representatives on the committee. Uh, this takes effect uh, January, in January, correct? Uh, these three take effect on January 1st. Thank Perfect. you. Great. Any other questions? Nope. All in favor of approving these three individuals to the Green Committee, say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? No. Hearing none, motion carried. All right, Steve, you're on a roll. Why don't you keep going for us? <laughs> All right, last one. Lynn, will you uh, so kindly? So uh, the POA has been requested to refurbish the picnic area adjacent to the tennis courts. It is proposed we, instead, uh, we install two metal park and erection, erection, recreational style shade structures along with concrete retaining walls, ADA ramp, electrical relocation, built-in barbecue, concrete trash receptacles, and concrete benches, uh, one shade structure will be a 28 by 30 uh, hip roof structure, and the other will be a 12 by 24 cantilever structure over the bleachers. We received five bids. Low base bid was $183,087 for all concrete work, retaining walls, ADA ramp, electrical, um, irrigation, drainage, shade assembly, demo, disposals, and temporary fencing. The two shade structures, including freight and engineer drawings, permit six. Uh, concrete benches, two concrete waste containers, one uh, charcoal waste container, um, and also the bleachers will be ordered by the POA and have a eight to twelve week lead time, with additional costs of uh, one hundred and twelve thousand seven hundred and seventy three dollars. 
Uh, project uh, cost is uh, $295,862 plus an 8% contingency coming from the CIP fund 056700. It's recommended the board of directors approve the amount of uh, $295,862 plus an 8% contingency from the CIP fund 056700 to build new shade area near the tennis courts. Steve, when you director, may I like to make a motion for this item? So moved. I'll second it. Uh, with that, any member comments, discussion about the tennis, proposed tennis shade project, tennis area shade project? No, okay, <clears throat> board members. Yeah, I'd like to ask you if you could, a lot of people here don't understand the difference between the reserve, the CIP and all that. And there's a lot of concern over spending. So if you or Eric could explain where the funding for this is coming from, because this is a pretty decent chunk of change, and why we're coming from that fund as opposed to the others. Thank you. So uh, the, our reserve funds um, typically replaces things that uh, we already own. Um, and typically, if it's you know a, um, a door, a bench, or whatever that we already previously have owned and is here on, and property of the POA, we use those funds. CAP funds is usually for a new build. Uh, the reason that we're choosing to take this out of the CAP funds, um, there is some concrete work over, there are some benches over there, um, but the amount of new um, items that are being placed over there kind of overrides it coming from the reserve fund. Any other questions? Go So as many of you know, this is, Something for the tennis club in terms of shade or a building has been a very long time in coming. And I'm talking well in excess of 10 years. Uh, so this is in in some ways way overdue for the tennis club. Um, it's not a building. So we've, you know, uh, tamped that down a little bit. And we got five bids, which is great. Uh, we take the, the lowest bid. So that that due diligence has been done. And you'll notice that of the total contract price of or total cost of just under 300,000, a third of those are uh, materials and a little bit of labor uh, to be supplied or purchased by the by the POA. And so we're not going through any, which is common for us to do in construction projects. But we're cutting out the middleman and doing the very best we can to keep the total cost down uh, of this uh, project, which is again also it's going to uh, mirror to some degree the architecture of the Indian Beach structures, which were put up a couple of years ago. So there's continuity there. So it's really a, a project that's, in my mind, overdue, and uh, we've done the best we can to keep the cost down. And uh, it's a, it's a it's good for the tennis club. It's good for the community. I have questions, <clears throat> if we can, um, and that is, when would you see this happening and how long would it uh, take to do this job? So construction is probably going to take a month and a half to two months. Um, uh, we're looking at, it depends on when we can get the structures. That's the that's the longest lead time. Uh, we're hoping uh, probably February to start, uh, weather permitting. And then also we'd work with the tennis club and make sure we weren't interfering with, um, you know, if they have some big events in, in those those months, you know, tournaments or stuff, we don't want to close down access um, to the courts. Uh, the courts could will remain open, but the, they won't have their typical routes. They'd have to use the back gates for uh, the, the center, the center two courts and the lower courts would have to be accessed by going around the walkway near the lake. Um, we will be, since we're moving the electrical, the big ugly electrical panel that's there at the middle courts um, uh, to just clean up that area. Uh, the lights for the courts, I believe, is it the, the course near the lakes and the middle courts uh, will be not functioning for, for a while. We're hoping to um, not have, um, you know, hoping maybe three to four weeks on, on the electrical. But again, um, weather permitting, if we have a wet winter like we had last year, um, it could get a little messy. We can be out for a couple of months, looking at maybe February and March is what I'm hearing. And the light, the lighting, it'll be available. The te tennis courts are available for use, but the lighting on two of the courts are, won't be available. Or is it for all four courts? It'll be all four courts all, because that's sub. They'll be up for a month. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, but the courts should be available for play during the day. Okay. Uh, we're hoping because it's winter time that more people 
enjoy playing during the day when it's a little bit warmer than when it gets cold at night. And while this isn't a tennis court uh, improvement, this is a an improvement of the patio area adjacent to the tennis courts. That that uh, area is available to all Canyon Lake residents, correct? Okay. Correct. Okay, and, and it's would it be reservable, much like it is at uh, at uh, Indian Beach. Uh, that is a question for activities. I'm, I apologize, I don't have that. Uh, Lynn, do, do you know that? We could work on that, sir. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so you can count on me, Lynn. There you go. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so that's good. It's, it's something, it's, it's an amenity for everyone. I do uh, concur with Greg said. I know this is something that's been talked about for many years. Um, most recently, a couple, three, four years ago, it was going, there was a desire to have a building, which probably would have cost uh, north of a million dollars, a million to two million dollars to put a building in. Instead, we're, we're renovating a patio for 200000 making it available for all of Canyon Lake. Um, so I think it's a, and then we're doing it at the least intrusive time, um, and out of a budget fund that's, uh, that is, that is available. So I think that answers all my questions. Any other questions? I, I was going to reiterate what uh, Greg said. <clears throat> Not only has this project or a project in that location been on an agenda for the last 10 years, but I believe it's been almost 20 years. Um, it's had different scopes. Um, but since the tree was dying and was taken down, which I think that was probably eight to 10 years ago, it's just been a barren piece of dirt. Um, this is really good. Our tennis club and our tennis teams are incredible. We have one of the strongest youth tennis programs in all the Valley. And this will get a place for the kids to hang out too. So that's super important to me because I want to see those kids you know, I know that we have a rule, no loitering, but I'd love to see the kids loitering there and watching their friends play. So at least gives them a place to do that. Maybe they're there doing their homework after school some days, but this really helps enhance that location. We have some great tournaments that come through there and I just keep building on that program. So I'm super excited to see this come to fruition. Okay. With that, any other comments? This is a financial uh, approval. So we're going to do a roll call on this one. Yes, sir. Director Bill? Aye. Director Commission? Aye. Director Cook? Aye. Director Doherty? Aye. President Van Fleet? Aye. Hearing none, motion carried. All right, Lynn, why don't you talk to us about this uh, new rule? Yes, sir. Actually, I, I had a typo on this one, uh, so I'm going to pull up the corrected version. It was just a small typo. Um, okay. All right. I'll try to read this fairly quickly. Um, okay. So this is a proposed new rule. Uh, with the increased popularity of members using bicycles, e-bikes, scooters, and skateboards as transportation throughout the community, there has been a significant increase in use of the personal devices brought to many of the special events held within the community. With the increased number of personal devices, it has had an impact on pedestrian and vehicle golf cart traffic at the special event locations. With this increased personal device traffic, event access for pedestrians and participants in the events has become more congested. Currently, there is not a rule addressing the use of bicycles, scooters, e-bikes, skateboards, etc. in the event areas or for being parked and or left on the common area during these special events. To alleviate, that was my typo, uh, the congestion and potential for pedestrians or participants to not be allowed ease of path through the parking lots, roads, and event areas, staff is recommending the board consider a rule revision for the use of bicycles, e-bikes, skateboards, scooters, et cetera, in the special event area, parking lot, and roadways during the designated event times. Staff is recommending the attached amendment to restrict access to walking these personal devices into the event parking lots, roads, or common area during these special events. These personal devices may be parked in designated areas at the special event. So since it's a new rule, it's all red. GR 4.1A, all personal mobility devices, bicycles, scooters, e-bikes, skateboards, et cetera, may not be ridden in or upon at special events located on common area in parking lots or on roadways where a special event is taking place. 
In addition, members riding personal use devices to the event must walk the device in and around the event area, parking lot, or roadway and park the device in designated area at the special event. And just to clarify on the roadway, part of that is things like Fiesta Day when we have the parade, uh, well, when we have things that are on the street that we have riders um, uh, riding in and out through the event area, it, it does become a congestion. So that's why we included that. We're not saying that you can't ride it on the street, just not where the actual event is being, is occurring at the time. So it's requested that the board approve this 28 day reading to add this new rule GR 4.1A as attached. Thank you, Lynn. Would anyone like to make a motion? Make a motion. Second. Second. Okay. Very good. Any member comments on this new ruling? Come on forward. Seven one eight three three one. Rules are great. There's lots of them. And, you know, most of us like to abide by them, but the enforcement, the enforcement is the problem. We don't have the enforcement. We heard security speak this evening about uh, the potential sites for many different things, but we couldn't catch, we couldn't get. That's our problem right now. We could make hundreds and hundreds of rules, but if they're not enforced, we're going to go nowhere with the rules. I see it on a daily basis. Kids on e-bikes, motorcycles riding through the community, lots of problems. Rules are not being enforced. Why should I why should I abide by the rules? Why should anybody? They're not enforced. I think that's something that should really be considered. More enforcement. Not against anyone, not against you guys specifically. It's not being enforced. So great rule, we need the enforcement. We're not getting it. Thank you. Thank you, Dana. Anyone else? I said, thank you, Dana. Paul Hawker, 3804052. Uh, just a suggestion. I notice we have all our security uh, small white trucks running around with their flashing yellow lights on. Uh, the kids have become very aware of this and they have lookouts that when they see the flashing lights come down, they tell, okay, everybody behave. I mean, they know how to behave. It's weird. Uh, but it, just a suggestion, maybe if they were to respond to calls without the lights on, uh, they might have a better chance of apprehending the uh, the guilty parties. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Yep. Any other members like to make a comment on this rule? Rule. Okay, it's a new twenty. It's a rule, so it's a twenty-eight day reading. Any member or board member comments? <clears throat> yeah, to me, this is what I call a common sense rule. In other words, you shouldn't be on an e e bike or a scooter speeding through it a crowd at 10 miles an hour when the pedestrians are all going four miles an hour. I think that's the pedestrian average speed. So in spite of the fact that it's a common sense rule, unfortunately, you know how common common sense is. So I believe this is a, a rule we need. Yeah, I'd like, <clears throat> excuse me, I'd like to add to that too, that um, we're, we're well aware of the difficulty in apprehending or citing uh, people on motorcycles or motor, excuse me, uh, e-bikes. Uh, and it is difficult because uh, they don't respect our community patrol. We don't want community patrol chasing them and creating a, a dangerous situation. So uh, it is difficult. But we would welcome any of your ideas on how we can get around that situation. And uh, we've we are continuing to work with patrol and try to come up with some ideas. We've got a registration uh, program that's gonna be implemented here pretty soon. Hopefully that'll help identify some of the violators from a distance uh, and some other ideas. But um, please, if you've got any ideas, share them with the board. We'd love to hear them. Thank you. Thanks, John. I'll add a couple of things too. And that is, 
We, uh, uh, I completely agree with enforcement. Enforcement's a priority. <clears throat> we need to improve, continue to work to improve that. That said, <clears throat> community patrol can't take action unless there's a rule. So even though we have 178 pages of rules, um, it does require the fact that we do put rules like this in place. And this one really really was born largely out of what happened at the tree lighting is, is one example where if anyone who came here, how many people came to the tree lighting ceremony? Okay. Well, there were 10,000 other people like you that uh, that also came. Uh, there wasn't a parking space to be had in the lot. There wasn't, wasn't a parking space to be had on any available curb. It was packed. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. It was a great event, a, a, a celebration of family. It was really a good thing. But in that, when you have that congestion and the people and the crowds and you have kids also, kids and adults in some cases, <clears throat> riding through and doing it, it's it, it, this is really a safety uh, matter. And so what we're, that's, I think, the reason we're introducing this new ruling is we, we think we need to do it, not so much for <clears throat> for for even security, but in this case, it's a, it's really a safety matter. So... Um, I would like to get clarification on this rule um, because we talk about events and everybody knows about the car club, car show and Fiesta Day and those events at Holiday Harbor. But we do two parades a year as well. And uh, this rule would apply to those situations as well. Uh, Fiesta Day parade and the golf cart parade. Right. Correct? correct. So what I was trying to kind of clarify, when we say on the roadways, it's the people riding through the the event area itself on their e-bikes. So um, like at the golf cart parade, there was several e-bikes coming alongside the golf carts um, and there's pedestrian traffic and it's dark and they're, some of them are going they're you know, as fast as they're up to 20 miles or however fast their little bike's going. But um, that that congested pathway. We have the pedestrians there, the golf cart participants. Some of them are weaving in and out around the golf carts out into traffic. And so that's where we're seeing in those event areas, we're trying to remove this additional traffic of bikes, scooters, e-bikes, et cetera. But not, you know, if they're in the parade as a parade participant, that would be different. <laughs> Thank you, Lynn. Yes. Um, and I, I noticed that at the golf cart parade and there were little children out there in the street picking up candy and bicycles going by. And I thought it was quite a dangerous situation. So, you know, any of you parents, please let your kids know that is not a safe situation to be in and they will get cited uh, if, if they do it. Thank you. Any other comments from the board? All right. So uh, any all in favor of approving this 28 day reading say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. Right. Lynn, why don't you continue on? Yes. Oh, Mary, sir. sorry, Mary, come on up. Lynn, Mary? It's technically Mary. <laughs> she asked me to present for her. Okay. Yes, sir. I know. <laughs> come on up, Mary. <laughs> Um, so I am presenting a 28 day reading for um, the golf rules. Um, the rules committee was tasked with reviewing and recommending updates to the golf rules. Um, the rules committee met with John Keegwin, sorry if I said that wrong, um, from the green committee on October 17th, 2023 to discuss rule revisions for the golf rules. The committee is recommending the Green Committee's revisions as attached. Um, there's quite a few rules in here. Um, it's a GR or sorry, GC 2.1 through GR 13.2 and CC 2.8 as attached. Is there a motion to motion? Second. Okay. Any member comments on new golf course rules? No? Board comments or questions? I'll comment. Um, 
the rules committee started, I want to say last June, maybe trying to reduce that 175 pages of rules down to a smaller document. Um, we have a lot of rules that are doubled up in every amenity, you know, no loud music in the campground, no loud music on the golf course, no loud music at golf field and every park. And every one of those things has, you know, we have these rules and then we have our general rules that also say that same thing. So that we really were tax task on that rule committee to try to remove duplication, try to make our rules more simple. And when we looked at like Cota de Casa, which is probably the closest gated community in California that like us in that size, their rule documents like 25 pages. So we were trying to see if we could get those rules down to 100 pages. Um, you know, not just for community patrol and us, um, it's also for all those new community members. So at least they'll probably tackle or even try to read all the rules because currently we think they probably don't until they're cited or somebody tells them. So one of the things we went to August, we went to the green committee and we asked them, Hey, why don't you guys work on your rules? And this is what they came up with. There's really virtually no new rules. It's just a rewrite of some of the rules to clarify what they are. Um, for example, they had, you know, golf carts can only be on the golf paths. No, no pedestrian tra traffic, no skateboards, bicycles, scooters. Well, instead of three different rules, we placed that as one rule um, and just put it all in there with commas. So this is kind of what this is. It's not a lot, any new rules. It's just a rewrite to simplify the rules and remove a couple pages um, which is the goal. So, and rules committee is still working through all the rest of the rules. Um, Mary and her team are working on it probably daily, but this is just kind of give you feedback of where this came from. Um, yeah. And, and I want to give you a little information and perspective from the green committee who, as Alex said, was tasked with this responsibility to condense these rules. Uh, they took it very serious and uh, we spent, uh, a lot of hours on on going over each of the rules with our golf professional who was very helpful with it. Um, and we think we came up with a, a good condensed version of the rules. Um, Mary, I have to ask if you were able to resolve that loud noise issue. Was it was it going to be pulled from the rules? You said you wanted to leave it, correct? Okay. Yes. All right. Well, I'll then put it in the I would like to amend the motion to add a $100 fine, which happened to be inadvertently uh, left out under the fee schedule for no loud music. Um, so if we can amend the motion. Okay, so we have a subsidiary motion to, uh, to amend it to change the fee on loud music. <clears throat> Is there a second? Second. Comments or questions? All right. All in favor of approving the subsidiary motion, say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Hearing none, motion subsidiary motion is carried. All right, Mary, while we have you up here, why don't you take the last item? Mm -hmm. Uh, requesting approval for revised rule GR 5.3R for illegal parking. It was brought to staff's attention that there is not a rule addressing vehicles parked in a fashion that prevents speed trailer operations and enforcement. Staff is recommending this amendment to allow the CLPOA to cite these vehicles when appropriate. Staff is also recommending a small increase in the fine due to safety concerns and lack of speed enforcement. After consulting with patrol, it was decided that the distance of 20 feet is appropriate. It is recommended that the board of directors approve uh, to revise rule GR 5.3R as attached. Thank you, Mary. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. Second. Okay. Hey. Members like to speak on this item of illegal. This was a uh, twenty day day read last month. It is a we're voting on making the rule this month. No members, <clears throat> board member comments or questions. I have a comment. I don't agree with this rule. We don't have a means of measuring twenty feet exactly. It leaves a lot of gray area. 
And I think that we're going to wind up clogging up the appeals process. You're going to see a lot of people coming in there saying, hey, you know, I was 20 feet. Unless there's a tape measure, how are you going to measure that? So without definitive measurement, I don't agree with this rule. I'm going to vote against it. I think that if we really want to do better about this, we should look at better trailer placement. Maybe put it on one side of a driveway because they're not going to park in front of a driveway because we have rules against that. We have rules against everything. But this rule here is just going to clog up appeals. It's not going to serve any purpose except more paperwork, more problems, more complaints. Any other comments? Yeah. And credit uh, to this comment goes to one of my fellow board directors up here uh, who I spoke about before this meeting. And it has to do with the last four words of the rule change, which, and I'll read the whole phrase. It says, blah, blah, parking within 20 feet of any speed enforcement trailer and preventing its operation. Well, what I foresee, if we leave those last four words in there, is there's going to be all these people that come in and say, well, look, I have my cell phone video that shows I'm only 18 feet. I'm sorry, uh, 21 feet from it. Uh, I'm sorry, 18 feet, which would make it, <laughs> make it a violation. And... It's look, it still works. You've got to let me off. So the solution to that would be to eliminate the last four words and just say no parking within 20 feet of any speed enforcement trailer. That's my observation. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with uh, Director Doherty. Um, trying to prove that it's preventing the operation is going to be a challenge and it's going to be an issue that the appeals committee we'll have to grapple with. So um, I think something is uh, clear as a 20 foot rule. I, I understand uh, Jeff's concern about identifying 20 feet and maybe we can come up with a cone on a chain or something that we can put out that would delineate that specific area. And we have to understand that we need clearance both in front of the trailer and in back because uh, clearly uh, it's when it's in, you're in front of it, your your speed is being picked up. But once you pass the trailer, that's when the camera takes charge and takes the photograph. So we need clearance on both sides. So um, if if the cones are required or some other method like signage or something like that that uh, would help identify the rule and give some clarity to the the members, uh, that that could be helpful as well. So I'd like to see the rule go forward and build build on that. Okay, I'm going to make a couple of comments. <clears throat> First of all, let's not lose the forest for the trees here. Um, this rule was put in place because people were parking. If this if this was the this this the speed trailer, they were parking it right here with the intent of blocking it to prevent it uh, from taking things. That was the intent. Uh, and so what we're trying to do is put something in place. Um, I think. We, ought, we need to make the decision, do you want to go forward with the rule or not? If we choose to amend it, we need to go back to a 28-day rule, which now delays us another 60 days. In my opinion, I think the rule as written is good enough to go forward uh, and approve. Any other comments? <laughs> Okay, well, we have one motion to approve the rule as two motion, or motion and a second to approve it as written. I guess we don't have a subsidiary, so let's go forward with that. All in favor of approving this rule on illegal parking as written say aye. Aye. All opposed? Nay. Nay. Four against, one in favor, motion failed. Okay. What was the second motion? There was no second question. That's well, it. Well, then Everybody got voted down, my friend. Can I make a motion? Not here. No. Well, you have to you have to introduce a new rule. Mr. President, may I make a comment? You, uh, um, if if the board would like to bring the item back, we can. Part of the delay on this was that it was tabled three months ago because they asked us to add a, a space distance, and so we came up with the twenty feet as a. A middle ground, yes, sir. So, thank you. 
Um, so I used to be on appeals and there is a rule regarding the stop sign or no, the curb. You can't park in front of a, I think it's the stop sign. You can't park a certain amount in front of the stop sign, but also from the curb. So patrol, if I'm correct, you go out with a tape measure. They go out with a tape measure and they actually see the distance and that's how they write the citation. So they, I am imagining they would do the same thing with this rule if the 20 feet is what you're worried about. The issue here is that the person parking their vehicle, how many of them carry a tape measure that goes to 20 feet that they can measure it out? Using the example you just mentioned, I was approached, I, I have been approached by several people, more than I want to count, who get tickets for the curb, and I believe it's 12 feet from the curb, 18. A lot of them don't know the curbs aren't marked. Um, you know, not everybody's going to read the 3,000 page rule book. So, moving forward with this, unless they're carrying tape measures, unless they have a way to measure it, it becomes a gray area. If it's a gray area, it winds up in appeals clogging everything up. If we have a way to legitimately measure it so that they can't find that gray area, I'm all for it. But until we find a way that Going back to Mr. Buckley's comment, we can enforce this properly, then we don't need another rule that we can't enforce. Okay, with that, I, th it's, I think we're done. Let's move on to uh, a comment. Come on forward, Paul. Paul Beauchamp, 3718004. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, you know, I, I think it's fine, um, you know, when some so that the uh, the, the uh, speed trailers are usable and workable. Um, I just want to make a clarification just to save time that uh, there's no verbiage in there to Joe's point about being 20, 20 feet in front or behind. So it should specify that it's both directions or or 20 feet away from it in total, just so that doesn't jump up later as uh, as an issue. Just my my input. Thank you. Thank you, Claude. Yeah, the the measure uh, the the, uh, the the ruling was was denied. It was not approved. And so, if it goes forward, we'll have to the board will have to decide if they want to come forward with a different rule or a 28 day reading in the future. With that, let's go. Let's move on instead to uh, general manager's report. Thank you for coming. Uh, I want to thank our operations and activities department, our communications department, really our whole staff and our vendors, including Community Patrol, for putting on a success, very successful tree lighting, golf cart parade, and all the the this season's holiday events. It really is a group effort from top to bottom. So thank you all. Um, also want to thank Doug Schultz again for producing our POA concerts. Um, it wouldn't be possible if he didn't volunteer his time. And um, this year, you may have already seen that we have a fantastic lineup. Um, Doug negotiates all of our deals. He has many connections in the industry. And we have an amazing lineup on February 10th. We have Oingo Boingo, former members. Uh, April 20th, we have Thompson Square. August 10th, we have Marcy Playground. November 2nd, we have Colt Ford. Concert tickets make a great um, Christmas present or birthday present. So um, get your tickets. They're selling fast. Uh, operations department, usually a high, I'll highlight a department. Uh, this month, operations have been very busy with uh, community events, all the setup for all the holiday events. They just replaced the Holiday Harbor dock. Uh, as I mentioned, Steve and I have been very busy with um, our lodge project here. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, as Bill mentioned, the lodge project is dangerously close to being completed. Uh, it's kind of our saying recently. Um, the project is under budget. Uh, this month, uh, we're expecting the bulk of the furniture for the outside patio, the bar, and the lounge and restaurant to arrive. We should be doing carpet in the restaurant and booths and final finishes uh, later this week and starting next week. Uh, year two paving project 
starts on January 2nd with the asphalt portion. Uh, this month, we're starting with some concrete repairs, cross gutters and curbs and gutters. And, and I think that's all I have this month. I just want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, Happy Holidays, and thanks for coming. Thank you, Eric. Uh, let's um, board comments. Alex. I don't have a lot to say tonight, but um, if you're like me, I love driving, driving around the community and seeing all the holiday lights on all the houses and everything. And I just want to thank all those homeowners that put a lot of work. Um, myself, I used to live on Mustang Court, so I know the work that's involved. A couple weekends in a row to put lights up. Uh, it's a lot of work. Um, it is the reason I moved away. I had no kids anymore. I was like, why am I doing this? Um but I'd also, you know, if you guys haven't been last year, White Wake really stepped up its game also. So get out there in the community, you know, either get in your golf cart, get in your car, take the evening, grab some hot chocolate, go around, look at it. It's just a work of art, some of these houses and the work they put into. So I just want to say thank you to all of them um, and happy holidays to all you guys. If you guys get to some of the events, the, the there's going to be a huge New Year's Eve bash here. The Senior Center is going to have a New Year's Eve bash. Um, get to these events. They're awesome and they're great for the community. And um, I'm super proud of what we've built here in, the, in this uh, this community over the last the last 10 years. A lot of a lot of movement in the right direction. So thank you guys. Have a great holiday. Thank you, Alex. Greg. Uh, good segue, Alex. Thank you. Uh, speaking of events, if you couldn't find something to do this past weekend in Canyon Lake, you don't have a pulse. <laughs> And there were so many cool things going on. Now, I chose to go to two of them, the golf cart parade, obviously. And the one I had not been to before was the uh, uh, Winter Wonderland event over in the town center, put on by Family Matters uh, jointly with the city. I had never been to that, as I said. And I, I just walked around there for about 15 minutes, checking things out. I was amazed how much fun everybody was having. I mean, it was just fantastic. And when I see those kind of things, it just really warms my heart that this is kind of what this community is all about. So that was my little experience uh, this past week. And I hope you had something similar. I would like to um, thank my fellow board members and their families and POA staff and their families. Wish them all a Happy holiday and prosperous new year. And thanks for all your hard work. And finally, I need to make a retraction. Last month, I sat up here and I talked about car washes, which is a subject that actually came up in the recreation committee. And I basically told all of you that this, while the city has kind of a vague uh, pro prohibition on washing cars, it's, it's too vague to really be much of a prohibition. So uh, I said, go ahead and wash your cars. Well, I found out subsequently that the POA itself has a prohibition. And while it's not perfectly clear, it is a prohibition about putting contaminants into the lake via the, the drainage system. And in fact, I ran into a friend of mine, a member here, a resident, who years ago was actually cited for this and uh, escaped by the skin of his teeth because... What happened was his daughter and her boyfriend came over and, you know, ran out and started to wash the car. And I guess the community patrol came by, knew of the rule, and he almost got fined like a thousand dollars because the fine, which I have here, is a progressive fine that, that goes up, starts at uh, 250 and goes up from there. But it can get pretty expensive. So I guess what I'm saying to you is I'm retracting my uh, suggestion that you start washing your car in your driveway. And also that now that we have seen the, the contradiction and the vagueness of the two rules, the city rule and the POA rule, there's a likelihood we're going to have to get together and, and normalize those and make them similar, if not identical. Uh, with the introduction these days of uh, low phosphate soaps and all that stuff, maybe there's the chance that you'll be able to wash your car again in your driveway, but don't go out and do it now because it's still against the rules. Happy holidays. Thank you very much. Thank you, Greg. <clears throat> We're going to send Director uh, Darcy Burke over to your house uh, for that discussion as well. Jeff. 
Well, I don't have much to say other than thank you for coming. Um, going after Greg and Alex, there's not much left to say. So they're uh, much more rehearsed at this. So, and, and to add on to what Greg said, if, if you didn't find something to do this weekend, you don't have a pulse, there's something wrong with you. You just hate people. Um, the Young Old People Club had a nice little Christmas party. Uh, the Grinch and Santa both showed up. Um, it was a nice little group. They had a nice live band. It was really amazing. I, I was very impressed. It, it, it surprised me. So moving forward, though, I would like to um, approach some of the security comments. Um, it looks like Mrs. Fowler left. But there's a good reason that we keep pushing the camera program. And her situation is a great reason for that. I've worked with her for over a year trying to find these kids. I have had some people send me some pictures, but they're too far away to make out who they are. However, if there was people right across the street, next door, wherever they were on the camera program, we could find out who's doing this. They have been harassed nonstop. This past couple of weeks, they've had windows broken. They've had the kids bang banging on the doors at two in the morning. There's a, a lot there that's going on. And some of you in the audience here have actually helped me with this with her. And so I would like to ask. Captain Wells, over off of uh, Continental, um, we have an issue over there. It's not just the Fowler's home. And if you want to give me a call in the next couple of days, I'll give you her address and we can go over there together if you like. So there are, um, you know, I hate to end that on a down note because it's Christmas and everything's good and all that stuff. So, but we do need to watch out for our neighbors, which also leads into, we started our pilot program on the Neighborhood Watch last month. Many of you have probably seen that online. Um, that looks like it's going to be going pretty good. They're going to have another meeting coming up, I think, uh, end of January, Bill. Is that the one? Yeah, yeah next quarter. So, it, it, you know, we're really curious to see how that goes. It's a pilot program. Um, if it's going well and you want to help start that in your neighborhood, please reach out to us. Uh, we want to see this take off. And we want to see it prevent these things like vandalizing an elderly couple's home, breaking a window that just covers them in broken glass. There, there's just a problem with that. Other than that, on that positive note, I'd like to say thanks for coming. I hope you guys have a great Christmas. There are so many things in store this month. Every weekend, there's something going on. Um, I look at the schedule, and I just want to take a nap. There's so much going on. So thanks again, and hope you guys have some great holidays. Thank you, Jeff. Joe. Oh, man. Well, um, I, I got to tell you, I've seen the golf cart parade a number of times. Uh, and this year was just great. I loved it. We sat, uh, on Canyon Lake drive and watched them go by and they were great. Uh, people put a lot of effort and time into their decorations and, uh, we loved it. We actually went, uh, after they went by about 20 minutes later, we let, we went on continent or Canyon Lake drive and went all the way to the question or the, um, Eastport and, uh, enjoyed the fun and the crowds that were there. And I got to tell you, it's incredible how many people were there having a great time. There were food vendors. I think uh, uh, activities did a wonderful job organizing that and operations did super with uh, all the barricades and uh, work that they'd signage that they had to put up. Um, it was a great event. And if you didn't get there, you missed a really nice time. Um, I'm also the liaison to the senior center and uh, Green Committee and TWG. So I'll give you a little bit of news from those organizations. Um, Senior Center is having their New Year's party, New Year's Eve, New Year's party. And uh, there are still some spots available to sign up. I was being leveraged uh, and pushed to commit myself, but uh, I had to check with my other half. So, but there are some spots open for the New Year's Eve party at the Senior Center. Uh, they have a little different approach. They celebrate New Year's at 10 o'clock. So that, that, that uh, can make it a little easier for you. And if you want to stay till midnight, you can do that as well. Um, their Christmas dinner is sold out, unfortunately, for those of you that haven't signed up. Uh, but uh, this will be our first year attending that and look forward to doing that. I want to congratulate the committee members that were appointed tonight. Um, three on the green committee and one on the Tuesday work group, same fella. Um, and, and it just warms my heart to see people want to step up and serve their community and uh, 
no better way to do that for a homeowner than to be on a committee where you can actually see how things are, the process is done and how things get, get done and get through the system. So um, look forward to working with them next year. Uh, also, uh, I was at the appeals and I got introduced to our new Marine Patrol captain, Dave Martilla. I understand he's a 20 year resident of Canyon Lake and he's uh, taken uh, charge of the Marine Patrol and I wanna welcome him and uh, to Canyon Lake and look forward to seeing him out on the lake. With that, I wish you guys all a very happy holiday and Merry Christmas, and we'll see you next year. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. And, and closing with myself, it's, you know, there are three three best times of the year to be in Canyon Lake, uh, Memorial Day, 4th of July, and December. Uh, as, as everyone has said, it's, uh, you know, it's a time for community. It's time to go out and, and, and go in the streets and, and meet with your neighbors and, and you know, just share share joy uh, among itself. And there's so many events, uh, and, and that is really due to a very hardworking staff we have. And so I want to thank the staff uh, for all of the things that they do for us. I want to thank my fellow directors, um, and I want to wish all of you a happy Hanukkah, a Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year as well. <laughs>